Hello everybody. Sorry for my freaky voice. I'm getting over a bad cold. Our next camera is the Lomo Instant Wide. It's a pretty recent camera. It was introduced in 2015. Uh, my sweetie wanted to try and shoot with wide. She has the uh, Insects Mini that I shot with before. The 210 uh, from Fuji. The only controls is lightning, darken, and force flash. Comes with a close-up lens. The 300 adds uh, two-zone focus to that. It looks a little less like a cloud, more like this. So I got her the Lomo. Thankfully she's let me play with it. Fuji made an Instax 500 AF. It's pretty awesome. A uh, lot more control, autofocus but it was never officially exported to the U.S. It has a uh, 99mm f8 to f22 lens. Uh, the shutter goes from 8 seconds to 1 250th of a second in auto mode. There's a bulb mode, pretty cool for doing, you know, streaky traffic and stuff. And then there's also a setting for 1 30th of a second we're using aperture priority based on 1 30th of a second or uh, for doing flash sync with an external flash. This actually has a PC sync socket. You know, you can get adapters, spring that out to the hot shoe. Uh, the flash is guide number 13 meters. Comes out to about 42 feet. Uh, it's automatically on all the time. So there's no need to do a force on. There is a force off. Focusing is by three zones according to these icons on the lens. 0.6, 1 to 1.2 meters, and infinity. But it is continuously variable. Stephen Schaub over at uh, Fidgetal Red Revolution put the link down in, uh, down in the text below. He made a scale for it makes it a lot more accurate to focus. There is a remote lens cap. That's brilliant. Everybody should be doing that. It takes a simple 2032 button battery. Doesn't really make the lens cap any uh, thicker. Honestly, everybody should be doing that. Um, the camera itself takes four AAA batteries. We took it on a trip uh, to San Francisco, it's still running on the same pack, so it doesn't seem too particularly uh, power hungry. Uh, controls on the back, you can do multiple exposures. That's really cool. Um, you can use it with what they call the Spitzer, part of the accessory lens kit, or just you know dial back the exposure a little bit. It has plus or minus one EV. Um, seemed like a toy, I kind of sneered at it at first. It's really pretty cool because it defaults to this half, lit, uh, half of the lens area. You can dial it down, do little pie slices. And that way you don't have to do exposure compensation for multiple exposures. You just don't expose the part that you don't want to expose. Part of the uh, lens kit, and it's not available separately, you got to either buy it when you buy the camera or you don't get it. There's this wide angle lens. It takes uh, this to the equivalent of a 21 millimeter lens on the 35 millimeter camera. There's a uh, swappable viewfinder from when you're using the super wide lens. There's also a close up lens. There's no uh, viewfinder for this. You kind of have to guess at it. Uh, it takes it to 0.1 meters, about 4 inches. 4 inches seems spot on for this when the regular lens is focused at its closest. I have no idea what that will do at other uh, focus distances. I'll have to do a separate distance scale for this close-up lens. Pretty cool though. I mean it, it seems to work really well. There are also Colored gels, you get this pack, can't remember, it's like four or six different colors, and they slip into a little slot front in front of the flash, gives you colored flash. So that you know that's kind of cool. Um, you get the manual 
which doesn't really tell you much more than you find on the website or what I'm telling you now. One thing that's cool though, you get a pack of uh, these technique cards. They have different kinds of shots that they do, and then on the back, they tell you how the camera was set to get the effect that you're looking at and the reproduction of the print on the front. That's pretty cool. It's like a mini tutorial. But uh, I don't remember how to get a close-up of the sleeping cat. Well, you just flip through this thing until you find that or something similar. And you set the camera the way they say on the back, and you're ready to go. So, anyway, uh, instant-wise, this is a good camera. Not great. It's missing a lot of controls it could have had. But uh, we're having a blast with it. Get a lot more control than just shooting with an Instax wide. So someday I hope Fuji or Lomo or somebody will make cameras that can actually match the fidelity of the Fuji Instax film. Because when you get it right, and it takes a lot of futzing to get it right, it's super sharp. The film can do it. The cameras are just not there yet. But we're going to keep playing with it, and I'll see you then.